friends. I join you from my floor today because we are gonna do a fun game of Smash or Pass Romance Book Edition. And there is no better sponsor for this kind of video than the one that I have today. Today's video is sponsored by Melissa. I promised myself I would not do partnerships with companies that I don't already use, trust. I've been ordering from them for years, but they're working with me today to promote a giveaway they're doing specifically for sending out different vibrators and gift cards where everyone wins something if you click the link down below. But let me just back up and say Balesa is a bi women company who focuses on all things sexuality, whether that be porn or sex toys, erotica, general education. We love them. Their mission is to empower everybody to embrace and explore and celebrate their sexuality which I think is really fitting because the fact that I'm a little bit nervous to do this just shows that I have a long way to go with embracing it and celebrating it and sharing it because obviously we talk about smut and romance books all the time online so what's the issue there with continuing to talk about things like this so Balesa has sent me a couple of their products. The two that I have today that I have not tried are the Air Vibe Pro and also the Thump. This is the regular Air Vibe that I have owned for years and they've come out with this new version. This one is dual stimulation, so there's an inside bit and an outside bit. These are fresh out of my mailbox. I was so excited to film this that I have not tried these. They're beautiful and stunning. So this one has controls on it as well as this new version has a remote. So obviously you saw this comes in a really nice discreet case. It's waterproof. It's supposedly quieter than the air vibe that I have and charges in the case. If you have not tried anything with suction, your life is about to be changed. So that's this one, built really nice, super soft. I also am trying out the thump, which is super different than anything else I've ever used. This one is a fully external toy and it just seems like it does everything. She looks like this. So we're double-sided here on this side. This is the part that intrigued me. It's like like a little almost like pop socket up here they call this their innovative thump technology and this actually has like a up and down flutter movement like that which I think will be really interesting the other side is the tried and true pleasure jet technology so again like if you have not tried it you must and also this vibrates so like everything you can ever need. Again, made from super soft silicone, also waterproof, also USB chargeable. But this is my plea to you. If you have not even gone on their website, you have to check them out. If you sign up on the link down below, you will either receive a completely free vibrator, so something here or something else from their site, or a gift card to put toward something. It's an amazing deal, full transparency. Again, they did not ask me to say this. I just bought something from their site for a dollar because you get points the more that you shop with them and I just spent my cash back on one item and got it for a dollar. So I genuinely would not be promoting them if I didn't love them already. I'm a little nervous Nelly about it because I'm a little Christian girl who typically wouldn't discuss things like this. But I've been a big fan for years. I hope to keep working with them. So please do check it out and let's discuss, like take away the stigma from it all. One more huge thank you to Balesa for the opportunity. Let's dive right in now to the Smasher Pass portion of the video. So my idea for this is I want to look through a list of all of the most popular romance books over the past few years. There have been some that have come out during the pandemic that we have not even discussed both good and bad. But especially with how TikTok has kind of made romance rampant and certain books have taken off for good and bad reasons, I just want to go through a list of what the most popular ones are and then tell you what I thought about them. The easiest way for me and because I am a child internally is just to categorize them smash or pass. I have pulled up a Goodreads list of top romances. I also brought out a couple of mine that I think might make the list. We'll see. But without further ado, let's just get into Smash or Pass. The first book I'm seeing on this list is The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. I have read this one. My biggest complaint with it, first of all, pass. <laughs> My biggest complaint with it is I can't stand Adam Driver. And so any books, there's like a trend now to do books about Adam Driver, but you just like change a little part of it and it's a different person. I'm all about authors writing fan fiction and then changing names and publishing it, but girl, you gotta change the names before you publish it. I will give this book credit. It was fun to read and I read it really quickly, but also people were like, it's so smutty and amazing. And there's like one sex scene. So overall I flew through it, but have no lasting feelings for it other than why was I just tricked into reading a book about Adam Driver. <laughs> and if that's the trend, if we're just gonna start publishing books about real men with their name in it, where's my Henry Cavill books? Where's my Robert Pattinson books? Where's my Timothy Chalamet books? But yeah, I'm gonna stick with pass. The next most popular romance book is of course Miss Pride and Prejudice. I say Miss, but honestly I don't want to give her the pleasure of having a title because big pass. 
Full disclosure, I wish I was a Pride and Prejudice girly. I have seen the movie, but like at a friend's house, kind of not understanding because they didn't have subtitles on. And when I tried to read the book, I got so confused. I actually cried. I do not fare well when I read books that I don't understand. And part of it is because I just didn't understand what was going on. So I think I need to watch the movie until I understand the plot and then go back and read the book now that I like know what to expect. But I really just didn't like it when I read it. And I love Keira Knightley. I think the movie is a good mood. I just don't see in it what other people see in it. For right now, hopefully my mind can be changed. That is one I'm willing to improve on. <laughs> the next book I knew would be here, so I, I had my copy. Beach Read by Emily Henry. I'm gonna say Smash because I devoured this. It's been a couple of years now, so honestly, I don't have that great of a memory on why I loved it so much, but just overall, anyone who's read Emily Henry knows. These are romances, but they read more almost like literary, not literary fiction, but just full rounded stories with intricate characters. It's not just like a fun, easy romp. Like there's some emotional depth to them, but I really enjoyed this. It's not, Emily Henry to me is not like the five star life change course of my life altered kind of writer but she's funny and the descriptions are really nice in this I also have not read book lovers so maybe that's the one that's gonna change my worldview but I read this and people we meet on vacation and they both were like good so yeah I'd recommend them but I wouldn't say that I'm her number one fan Ooh, we're starting to pull from this list now that's gonna be a little helter skelter now ignore that the next book is Red, White, and Royal Blue, which I have loved and cried over and oh, just look at the tabs on this and you tell me if it's a smash or pass. This is a definite smash. The only thing that I'm kind of sad about is this definitely feels like a zeitgeist of the 2017 to 2019 era of just the escapism of hating the Trump administration. So I feel like this was all really, really special at the time because it was this escape into a new world where women led America and it's fun and lighthearted, but to this day, Casey McQuiston probably has one of my favorite, if not my ultimate favorite writing style, because the way that her characters talk to each other perfectly encapsulates how I talk to my friends. A lot of times in books when characters text each other or they have these quirky dialogue moments with one another, it feels really contrived and generic and cringy, but somehow Casey makes it sound like the most natural thing in the world. If you're watching this and haven't read this, I'm kind of surprised. Oh my god, that's considered a romance book? The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. I mean, I guess. It wasn't what I think of when I think of like most popular romance books recently, but I guess Pride and Prejudice isn't either. Whatever. Um, absolute pass. I'm almost too embarrassed to admit this because as a millennial and Gen Z cusp, this is leaning a little bit too millennial for me, but this is where I started my big oopsie in the middle of this video by referring to books that I meant to say smash for by saying pass. Pass as in it passes the test, it passes the stand up to time. I definitely misconstrued and misspoke. From here on out, anytime I say pass, I'm gonna have to clarify whether that means good pass or bad pass. Absolute pass. Smash. And that might be because I have the nostalgia from it. I remember when that book came out, I had it pre-ordered. I would like drive around to different Barnes and Noble and look for his signed editions because he like signed all of the first editions. So at one point I owned like 10 of them. When I first read Shatter Me and I emailed Tahara afterward being like, oh my God, this book is so good. I said verbatim, this book was really good, probably number two to The Fault in Our Stars. Like, it was my number one favorite book when I was like 15, which I think might be true for any teenager in 2012, but I also haven't reread that one in years, so I don't know if I'd reread it and be like, why is a old man trying to write a 15 year old girl but it definitely challenged my reading level at that time it made me think it made me cry i've spent so much of my life crying about this book more so than red white and royal blue if you haven't read the fault in our stars i don't know where you've been this next book is the one i've been waiting for and it is it ends with us by colin hoover if you've never met me hi i'm whitney and i cannot stand Colleen Hoover. I read like five books by her before giving up and I think it was November 9 that I completely cut ties and I was like this woman should be jailed and after I did that this was the most recent book that had come out I think in like 2017 and everyone was like this one's different you have to give this one a try it's about combating a guy who's a domestic abuser it's so healthy and it's amazing and now it's like the number one book in the world. Part of me is tempted to read this book almost for the clickbait of like revisiting an author that I hate because I've already been spoiled on Verity so I don't think I would really get into her like thriller that everyone's obsessed with but here's the thing pass 
I know I'm not gonna like it. I am predisposed to hating her writing style. I will give her credit that her books are really easy to read, which is why everyone who has read them is able to fly through her books, but I can't stand her. I don't know what this book is about. I don't care to know what it's about. I don't care to try it out. I don't care to give her a second chance. I don't want anyone here to tell me, pass, 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 can't stand her. No. Now I'm back to my safe pile because the next book is The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. This was one of the first romances that I read that wasn't like Christina Lauren. I just remember reading this at a time where no one was really reading romance or it wasn't like that big of a genre yet. And so trying to find romances that had smutty parts or like good chemistry and the men weren't assholes. This was revolutionary to me at the time. Would it stand up to time if I reread it? I don't know, but I loved it so much at the time, I'm gonna say pass. Smash. I really liked that this book had a scene where like she gets sick and he has to take care of her. And this is Enemies to Lovers, by the way. It's like a workplace. I haven't been describing any of these, have I? Oh well, I love when two people hate each other, but then they can get over it because one of them needs help. So this was game changing with that. And I obviously tabbed it a whole lot. Oh my God, there's so much Hen Emily Henry coming up. Okay, these two are back to back on the list. So I'll just mention them together. Book Lovers and People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. This one I've not read yet, so I can't tell you, but I'm assuming it's gonna be a pass. <laughs> Smash. That's right, because everyone loves it. This one, on the other hand, I have read. And here's an unpopular opinion. I'm gonna say pass on this one. This is like a friends to lovers that go on vacation together. It's set in like a then and now timeline of like the falling apart of their friendship. I kind of didn't care about them as a couple. It just felt slow to me. There wasn't a whole lot of chemistry. Like the book made sense and it was well written, but I didn't have any emotional attachment to it. Especially compared to her other books, book lovers is as good as people hype it up to be maybe this one is not worth your time part of me almost wants to reread this because i'm so confused why other people love it much more than me but also kind of don't care i would say pass on this one the next book is the kiss quotient by helen huang i mean this book was okay but I'm gonna say pass, because I feel like there were a lot more out there that I enjoyed a lot more. This once again just struck like the middle of the road for me. I like the idea that it's a woman who's not experienced sexually, so she like meets someone who can help her, because like super relatable, right? But it did not fulfill that for me. It was not interesting. It felt almost too calculated and not sexy. So I just didn't pick up on any chemistry between the characters and I wish that I liked it more. I wasn't a big fan, so I'm gonna say pass on that one. But in a major contrast, the next book on the list is The Unhoneymooners, which I read before it came out, devoured it. Five stars, amazing. Smash, pass, smash, pass, smash. Pass. This book is enemies to lovers of two people on a honeymoon that was non-refundable. The banter in this and the way that it's like two people stuck together who can't escape, who can't stand each other was so fun. This I think is like the last good Christina Lauren book too, which kind of hurts my heart because I feel like they had so many bangers like this back to back and then their books became so average. Definitely worth your time. Smash. Pass for sure. Oh God, sorry. I just scrolled past an ad and it was Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. Pass. I can't believe I've read all of these other than like one. Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover, I can't even remember what it was about other than it's like trauma porn and it was miserable, miserable. Pass, one star, hated it. Fifty Shades of Grey. I think if you want to read it just to understand like the zeitgeist of it and what people were freaking out about, like again, it was one of those unheard of books where like there's sex? Like it was a breakthrough book, I think, even though it was Twilight fan fiction. If you want to read it just to understand the phenomenon, I think that's a fun way to tackle it. But being honest, is it a good book? No. And it's also like a four book series at this point. So pass for me, unless you want to be ironic and just read it to have fun. And then Me Before You by Jojo Moyes. I read this like freshman year of college. I don't remember a word of it. <laughs> because of that, I'm inclined to say pass. Has this book also had ableism accusations? I'm pretty sure there have been. Cause it's like a girl who's a caretaker for this disabled man and he ends up, spoiler alert. But yeah, I'm gonna say pass. There's so much more stuff recently that's better than it. And why not read a book about disabled joy instead of disabled pain? Okay, I'll just fly through a couple more. Twilight, listen, <sighs> call my mom and tell her I'm a whore, but 
Smash. It feels less like a book to me and more of a phenomenon. I don't know how I can explain that. I don't think if you were an average reader and I said, hey, this vampire book is good, you should pick it up, and you knew nothing about it and read it, it probably objectively would be like a two or three star book. But I mean, it is just so iconic. And if you pair it with the movies and watch them side by side, and you, like all the discussions that can be had and all the books we missed out on that Stephanie could have been publishing all these years, I just think it's such a fun universe. And it literally like was by my side as I grew up so I can't say no. New Moon and Eclipse are also on here. I'll say pass to those because come on not as great as the first and the last book. The selection by Kira Cass is on top romances of all time. I mean, I'm sorry, but that one's gotta be a pass from me. There's so much better YA romance out there. I mean, it's fun and addicting. The selection to me is like watching The Bachelor. You wouldn't really call The Bachelor a show about genuine, true, passionate romance. It's just for the drama and the gossip. I would say read the selection if you want something like that, but not if you're looking for the most chemistry, beautiful love story of all time. Ooh, the Duke and I by Julia Quinn, the first book in the Bridgerton series. By the way, there have been so many books here. I probably need to go soon. I adore the show. It is my comfort show. I can rewatch it over and over and still cry. I was really nervous that the book wouldn't be good, but I'm here to assure you. Smash. The books feel like you're watching it in the show. And I know it might be because they exist in both places, but genuinely the book is so beautifully written. And even though there's the scenes in that show and the book that are a little bit sketchy. The dialogue between them just jumps off the page and the men are so dreamy and the women are so strong. Like it's so easy to make those kinds of things feel contrived, especially in historical romances. And especially in like a Victorian English historical drama where a lot of that is overdone and there's a lot of saturation there, but these ones truly stick out from the pack. You have to give them a shot if you enjoy the TV show. But according to Goodreads, those are the top romance books on the website, which Hopefully it wasn't obvious how I feel about all of these, but I just wanted to clear the air and tell you what's worth your time. Maybe if I do future episodes of these, we can get down into the nitty gritty and talk about lesser known books or maybe ones that I haven't read before and see if there's something that I would or would not be interested in. But that's all I have to talk about today. Once again, huge thank you to, to Balesa for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check out the link down below and see what you get because everyone who clicks it and signs up will get some kind of prize. As always, thank you for your support. Thanks for making it to the end of the video if you're here. I will catch you next time. Bye!